Hey there, Angular folks, and welcome back. I've seen a lot of comments throughout my SignalForms tutorials asking about Zod validation integration, and today we're finally tackling it. We're starting with a form built using reactive forms and Zod, and we're going to flip it to SignalForms and reconnect our Zod validation. This is where people tend to get stuck. Once you migrate to SignalForms, you're unsure of how to integrate with existing Zod validation. That's exactly what we're fixing today. One quick note before we dive in, this is actually my first real Zod integration, so if you spot anything that could be improved, please drop it in the comments. I genuinely want this to be correct and production ready. Okay, so this is a really simple signup form currently built with Reactive Forms and Zod. Let's click into the username field and blur it without typing anything. Boom, right away we see validation errors from Zod. It's telling us the username is too short and that it doesn't match our allowed pattern. Same thing with email. Click, blur, and we immediately get a Zod email validation message. So everything works perfectly for now. So what is Zod if you're like me and you've never used it before? Well, it's a schema validation library. You define the shape of your data once and Zod validates it at runtime with really clean, human-readable error messages. It's extremely popular in React, Node, and full-stack TypeScript apps, and today we're applying it to Angular. Since it's an external package, you install it just like anything else with NPM. But we already have it installed here, so let's jump straight into the code. First, let's open up our form schema file. At the top, we're importing Z from Zod. That gives us access to the schema API. Then we define our signup model using z.infer. That keeps our TypeScript type perfectly in sync with the schema, which is huge for maintainability. Next is this Zod error map type. This just describes the shape of our errors object. Each field name maps to a list of messages. That simple structure is what we render in the UI later. Now, here's the actual schema. Username must be at least three characters. It must match our regular expression pattern. And email must be a valid email address. Then at the bottom, we've got this validate signup function. This runs safe parse. And instead of throwing, it returns either success equals true with validated data or success equals false with a clean messages error map. That error map is exactly what we're displaying in the UI. Now let's jump over to the template to see how this is wired up. Here on the form element, we're using the classic form group binding. We also have ng submit wired up to our on submit method. This is the standard reactive form setup. Here's the username input bound using the form control name directive. Below that, we grab our Zod errors for this field using a get Zod errors helper. And we only show the list if there are errors and the control has been touched. That way, we're not yelling at the user before they even interact with the form. Scrolling down, the email control follows the same exact pattern. It uses the form control name directive to wire up the control and the same logic to display any validation errors. And at the bottom, we've got a simple submit button. So that's the template. Now let's switch over to the component TypeScript. First, we have this Zod errors object. This stores all the messages coming back from Zod. Below that, we create our reactive form using the form builder with two controls, username and email. Inside the constructor, we immediately run Zod once for the initial state. Then we subscribe to value changes, which means every time the user types, Zod reruns and updates the error map in real time. We also have the get Zod errors helper we saw in the template. It just returns the message array for a specific field. And finally, 
we have the onSubmit function where we run validate signup one more time as a final safety check before submitting real data. Okay, so we started out with this as a reactive form. And now that we understand it, let's fast forward. We've now migrated this form over to Signal Forms, but we haven't wired Zod back in yet. Let's click and blur username. Nothing. Same for email, no validation at all. Also, when we click the Submit button, the button is actually submitting. We can see this with this console log here. This should not happen. We shouldn't be able to submit the form without a valid username and email address. So the UI looks fine, but validation and submission are completely disconnected. This is the exact problem we're fixing. Now let's see what's changed in the code. The form schema hasn't changed, so there's nothing new to see there. Let's open the new template. First thing to notice, there is no form group anymore. Instead, we bind each input using the new field directive. This directly connects the input to the signal form field. Then, instead of calling a helper like get zod errors, we just read touched and invalid status, and then loop through the errors. This means Angular is now completely in charge of the UI state. And we have the same exact pattern for the email too. We have the field directive binding for the control, and the same errors logic too. Okay, now let's switch to the component TypeScript. Instead of a form builder, we now create a model signal. This is the single source of truth for our entire form. Signal forms don't work with form group anymore. They work with signals, so the model itself becomes reactive. We then pass that model into the new form function. That creates our field tree and all the reactive state. Then, in the onSubmit function, instead of checking validity manually, we now use the new submit method. This function only runs if the form is actually valid. So now the UI is signal forms native. But we still need to plug Zod back in. We're ready to bring Zod back into the picture, this time in a way that's fully compatible with signal forms. To do this, inside the form function, I'm going to add a second argument, a schema callback. This gives us access to the entire form state and lets us return validation data back into Angular. Mentally, everything we're about to do is just one thing. We're translating Zod's error map into the format signal forms understands. The key function we need here is validate tree. We need to pass the schema as the first parameter. Then we add a callback to run the validation logic. This function exposes the context of our form so that we can access it. This lets us run validation across the entire form and map errors back to specific fields. First thing we do here is run our existing Zod validator. If validation succeeds, we return undefined. That tells Angular there are no errors. Next, we'll pull out the result errors into a constant. Then we'll create an empty errors array with the new validation error array interface. This is the format signal forms expects for validation. The with optional field property here just means each item is one validation error, and it can optionally be attached to a specific field. Now we need to create a helper to get a reference to the field that we're validating. We'll create a function and use a simple switch statement based on the Zod keys for this. If it's the username key, we'll pass it the username field from our form. If it's the email key, we'll map it to the email field. Then we'll return null if it's neither of these. Now we loop over the Zod error entries and push messages into the errors array.
For these individual errors, they need a unique kind property. We'll use the Zod key for this. It's essentially just the error message type. Then we provide the error message itself. For this, we'll use the error message from our schema. And then we just need to add the field reference that it belongs to. After this, if we added any errors, we return them. Otherwise, we return undefined. And that's it. Zod is now fully wired into our new signal based form. Let's save everything and head back to the browser. Now, let's try it again. Click Blur, and validation errors are back. And what happens when we click the Submit button now? Well, we no longer submit the form because it's not valid. That's great, right? Now, let's add a valid username and a valid email. Nice. The error messages disappear instantly. Now, let's click Submit. Boom. Our submit function finally runs and logs the form data. That means the form is valid and signal forms allowed the submission. So now we truly have the best of both worlds. Zod still owns our validation rules. Signal forms owns the UI state. No form group, no form control name, and no duplicated validation logic. If this video helped you understand how to combine Zod with Angular signal forms, hit the like button. If it didn't help, let me know why in the comments. I do actually read them. And if you're exploring signal forms right now, subscribe because I've got more coming. And hey, if you want to represent Angular off camera too, check out the Shieldworks gear linked below. It's built for devs who treat this stuff like the real craft that it is. All right, that's all for today. See you in the next one.